Let's go over Lico question number 1475, final price with a special discount in a shop. Now the question says, given the array prices where price at index i is the price of the ith item in a shop. So that means we are going to be given an array and we are going to have a bunch of numbers which represent a price of an item. There is a special discount. So there is going to be a discount for items in the shop if you buy the ith item. So we're going to be given some kind of discount. Then you will receive a discount equivalent to price at index J, where J is the minimum index such that J is greater than I and price at index J is less than or equal to price at index I. Otherwise, you will not receive a discount at all. So let's look at our example array with our prices. Now again, each of the numbers represent a price, right? So price at index I. Now, how do we find the discount that we are going to get? Well, that's the important part, right? So discount has two conditions. J has to be greater than index I. So the index has to be greater than the current index. So let's say that we're looking at the first element and this has an index of zero, right? So that is I is equal to zero. Well, if you want to find a discount, you have to look past our first item. So it will be four, six, two, and three. And now there is a second condition and it has to be the fact that price at index J has to be less than or equal to prices at index I. So what does that mean? Well, it means that whatever the price of the other item is, it has to be less than or equal to our current price, which is eight. So right now our price is eight and we have to look past index of zero because J has to be greater than I and our I is currently zero and price has to be less than or equal to our current price, which is eight. Well, to find the discount, we will have to obviously iterate through the rest of our prices array and find the corresponding discount. And one key thing to note here is that J is the minimum index. So that means that it's going to be the first item that fulfills these two conditions. So when I is equal to zero, our price is eight, right? And if you were to go to the right of our index zero and find two elements that satisfy this condition, well, obviously four, six, two, and three, they're all going to satisfy our constraint number one, right? So we just have to look for price that satisfy our constraint number two. Well, since our price is eight, and if you were to look at our second item in the array, you can see that four is less than or equal to our current price. So that means that we can use this number or this four as our discount. So we subtract four from eight to get four as our first discounted item. And you can see that we have our four over here. Now let's try calculating more elements. Now when our price is equal to four, now we have to look at right of four to satisfy our first constraint. And the first number happened to be six. Well, does six satisfy our constraint number two? Is six less than or equal to four? It's not, right? So that's not going to be our discount. So that's not it. So we look at the next number because J is the minimum index such that it satisfies these two conditions. So we just keep looking for the discount that we can get. Well, we'll get two now. Well, two satisfy condition one, obviously, and is two less than or equal to four? Yeah, it is. So we can use two as our discount. We subtract two from our price and then we get two as our answer. And you can see that in our output, we have our two. And next price is going to be six. And we look at our right of that and we have two and three. Well, they're gonna satisfy the first condition. So we look at is two less than or equal to our price, which is six. Well, that's true, right? So we subtract two and we get four. So we have our result over here, that's four. Next, our price is going to be two. Well, we look at right of two so that it satisfies the first constraint. Well, is the second constraint fulfilled? No, it's not, right? Because three is greater than two. So this is going to get a discount of zero. 
So we keep our two, so we don't get any discounts. And you can see that we have our two over here. And finally, that's the last one. And that has a price of three. Well, are there any elements right of three? So that doesn't satisfy our constraint number one, right? So we don't get any discounts. So we get zero and we get three as our final price. And you can see that we have three as our last element for our input. So this was the first discounted item, second, third, fourth, and fifth. And you saw that some of them didn't get any discounts, right? So that's how this problem will work uh, step by step. So try to implement that in code. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks. Now let's implement our solution. Our solution is going to have a time complexity of O of n squared and space of O of 1. Now, before we implement our solution that has space complexity of O of 1, I want to first code our solution with O of n complexity. And later, we are going to implement our O of 1. And I want to implement the worst solution first because, I mean, there is not that much difference between our first and optimized solution, but it's also good to think about how you can optimize your solutions, right? And obviously, if you were to use space complexity of O of 1, that means you, we are going to use in place method. But first, let's code our solution where the space is O of n. So first thing, I want to create a variable named output, and this is going to be an empty array, and that's obviously going to store our result. Now I want to return my output here. Now we need to be able to iterate through all the elements in our array. So we want to go through all the prices or all the items. So starting at index of zero, I want to iterate until I reach the end of the array. And we increment by one each time. And this should be prices. Okay, that looks good. And I want to create a variable named price and set this equal to current item that we are looking at. And next, I want to declare a variable to store my discount. And I want to set that to zero. So if it is a case that I can't get any discounts, obviously our price wouldn't decrease. Next, I need to be able to fulfill two conditions. And if you remember first condition, first condition was that whatever my current element is, so if it's eight, I have to look at right of eight to find the applicable discount. So let's implement that first. So to do that, I'm going to use a another for loop, and this is going to be i plus one. And we iterate until we reach the end of the array, and we increment by one each time. And this should be j is less than. Now, this is our first condition, and that's because whatever the element we're looking at is going to be an index i plus one. So that means if it was a case that our current element was this eight, we're looking at right of eight. So that satisfies our first condition, right? And now we need to fulfill our second condition. And if you remember what our second condition was, it has to be the fact that the discount has to be less than or equal to our current price. Let's say that this number was, let's say nine. Well, if it is a case that it's nine, that means that we're getting more discount than the price of our discount, I mean, price of our item, right? That means that the store is paying you to keep the item. That doesn't make sense. So we have to look for a price that's less than or equal to the current price. To do that, we need our condition check. So we'll create our, if our current discount, which is going to be represented by prices at index J, if this is less than or equal to our current price, then what do you want to do? Well, we want to override our discount with our current price, which is basically our discount. So whatever number that's right of eight, that satisfy this if statement, is going to be our discount. And there is a another important thing that you have to keep, and that's to have this line break. Well, what happens if we didn't have this break? Well, what would this for loop do? Well, it's going to keep iterating and find any number or any price that satisfies this condition. And if you were to do that, we would get a wrong discount. The question is that we want the first instance that satisfies these two conditions. And if we didn't have this break statement, we would keep going and probably end up at three. That's not what we want. We want the first element that satisfies the two conditions. So we break out from the loop. And now 
we have our discount. So after we have a discount, we want to add the discounted price to our output. So we do output.push and we want to subtract discount from our price. And finally, we get our result. But something is not looking good. And this should be prices.length. And as you can see, we have our result. Now, before we optimize our code, let's just go over this one more time. We declared an output variable to store our result. We're iterating through our array to get each price of the item. And we just created two variables, price to represent the current price and discount to represent the discount. Here, this inner for loop is looking for the discount that satisfied two conditions. First was that it has to be right of our current element. So our for loop satisfies this condition. And second condition is that whatever our discount is has to be less than or equal to our current price. If it satisfies these two conditions, we are going to overwrite our discount with that discount that we found and we want to break. And why do you want to break? Well, we have to break because the question said it has to be the first instance that satisfies these two conditions. So we break, we get our discount. And after we get this our discount, we add it to our output variable and push in the discounted price. And finally, return our output. Now let's try to optimize our code. Our first solution had a space complexity of O of n, but we want this to be O of 1. So we are going to use in place method for our solution. So in order to do that, let's get rid of our output and let's comment this line out and let's replace this with our input array. So prices. Okay, that looks good. And our code really won't change except that we are going to delete our output and we replace this with our prices, which is the original input array. And we just have to actually replace this line. Well, since we are using a in place method, we want to get our prices array and we have to override our current element with the discounted price. Now, how is our current element defined or represented? Well, it's represented by prices at index i. So we are going to get the same thing. So prices at index i. So what is this going to equal to? Well, it's going to equal to our discounted price, right? So that's going to be price minus discount. And that's it. You can see that we got our result. And if you were to compare the original code with this one, it's pretty much the same again. It's just that it doesn't have the output variable. This line changed. Pretty much the only change was this, this line. We just deleted our output and we changed our output with prices over here. But other than that, it's, it's the same. So no different logic. It's just that we are using in place method to optimize our code so that we can save some space. If you want, you can just get rid of this and just use prices at index i instead of using price. But I think this is easier to read. But regardless, this is our solution and that's it for this question. If you guys find this helpful, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Thanks.